Watch you guys got another video here for you on things to consider before buying a computer or gaming PC. Now, how do you choose a desktop PC? This is what this video is all about. And I'm going to show you some of the things to look out for and some of the pitfalls to watch out for. Now, there is some really good pre-built PCs out there and sometimes you can get a pretty good deal and it beats uh, any sort of custom PC that you could put together. So don't think that uh, the pre-built systems that you can see online are all rubbish. There is some really good ones, but there's also some really bad custom PCs out there which you need to steer clear of. So let's take a look at it in this video. So let's take a look at the first uh, build here. We've got this white case here from Thermal Tape. Now this is a $100 case. I think you can buy a lot better for $100. That's just my personal opinion. But it does have that door at the top which is a bit old school it just looks a little bit dated in my personal opinion and again at six hundred and twenty four dollars and ninety nine cents you'd expect to see a little bit better uh, from that type of build it does have a ryzen 3 1200 4 core processor which is an entry level of the ryzen uh, chips and also we do have one terabyte of storage and windows on that same drive so no ssd or no m.2 slot populated the motherboard itself is an a320m motherboard which means it's l budget it's the most cheapest budget motherboard you can buy and they've also utilized a micro atx in a large case like that which makes it look even more silly again we've got the gtx 1050 ti 4 gigabyte version little bit dated now you can get more modern uh, gpus than this maybe they've got surplus of them i don't know uh, one eight gigabyte stick of ram only 2400 megahertz which means you're only getting single channel speeds and you're not getting the dual channel speeds of that memory because i've only gone with one stick there is only two slots on the board which means you're going to have a little bit of room for upgrading with one more stick but again in the meantime you're running single channel mode bit of a double-edged sword maybe should have gone for a motherboard with four slots on it but then again it all comes down to cost it does have a dvd um, rom drive in here 24 times dvd rom drive i don't know who puts them in there but again while you're using this case that's the reason why you've got to put one in there because i don't know anyone who uses them but again this is the inside you can see g skill memory one stick uh, um, eight gigabytes 2400 megahertz again ryzen utilizes super fast ram speed so why do you put in a 2400 megahertz ram stick in there i don't know again m.2 slot not utilized here revision one on the motherboard when the motherboard is already at revision four to me personally i just think it could be a little bit better overall i just don't think it looks great at all with the cable management let me just quickly show you the next picture so you can see the cable management on this system here and that's due to the power supply being uh, non-modular. It's not a, a modular power supply. So you're getting all the cables stuffed in around the back. And the case design itself is really old hat. They've got the uh, hard drive cage at the front, DVD up the top there, which is old school building. And again, micro ATX motherboard in there, which looks absolutely tiny in that case. No power supply shroud in there. And I can't believe this case is $100 to buy. No rubber grommets in the cable management area. So all in all, catch up a mustard uh, 24 pin connector there as well. So it does look a little bit, I don't know. For me, I'm not a real big fan of it, to be fair. And at $624.99, I think you can do better for that particular money. Now again, a lot of people seem to like this type of computer because they have bought it. So let me know what you think about it. I think it can be better. It can be made better by removing a DVD-ROM drive, getting you know a, maybe a $40 case with a PSU shroud that hides the uh, hard drive and stuff like that. It will hide all that cage and all the cables. You won't see it and it will look just a lot more sharper and a lot more tidier. You can change out those LED fans for RGB and just make it a little bit better and still make profit so that's my personal opinion on this particular type of build so looking at pc part picker i've picked out all of the parts here and uh, again i've used this board here i'm pretty sure it's close to this board but again i do think uh, that this is not an overpriced system it's just a uh, wrong parts choice that's what i think and you can see the case here is a whopping 107 dollars and i think you can do a lot better 
it comes in at $493.35, which means there's about $120 profit in that build. And that's pretty acceptable, to be honest, uh, for a build of this um, caliber. You know, so I don't think they're ripping people off with the price. I just think it can be a lot more better and brought up to date and brought into the modern era with a better case and a better design. And uh, I think it would uh, sell even better than what it is actually selling right now. That's just my personal opinion. Moving on to the next one here. This one is a shocker. It really is. AMD FX 6300. This CPU was out when the dinosaurs was alive. It's a really old CPU. And again, it only comes coupled with an R7 240 2GB graphics card, which is not that great, to be honest. And this is a major company selling, uh, you know, old hardware. They must have a surplus stock of FX uh, 6300s and a bucket load of R7 240s, 2GB cards. Personally, I'd give this a wide berth. It's not that great. Now, they've used a better case than the previous build, and you do get a free keyboard and mouse, but what is that? It's not that great. And at $450, it's quite a lot of money for an old piece of hardware. And again, you get only getting eight gigabytes of DDR3, which is the older architecture. If you look here, you can see how they've listed it all out. Personally, I think they need to scrap this one and maybe sell off the parts at really cheap prices rather than make PCs out of them and try to palm them off on people that are trying to buy gaming PCs. They've even listed it as an ultra gaming PC. I mean, really? Is it a really an ultra gaming PC? With something like the word ultra gaming PC, you'd expect to have a 2080 Ti in it rather than, you know, an R7 242 gigabyte graphics card. Pretty shocking, really. So let's take a look at inside the case. You can see no fan on the top here. The case is a lot better, so the design of it is a lot better than the previous build. So that is an important thing to make sure you got the right design that you like. Performance wise, it's pretty low. You know, 6300, uh, FX 6300 is pretty low by today's standards. Again, uh, you know, you've got four slots there for memory upgrades, but I mean, you're already in DDR3 and we're talking about going into DDR5. You know, it does have a PSU uh, basement there for your PSU. And again, it does have that tempered glass, which also helps sell uh, PCs. This one is an AMD 3.30 gigahertz eight core processor. Now you might be thinking, wow, $500 for an eight core processor, it must be a bargain. And of course, when you look closer, you can see it's an FX8300, which is a pretty old uh, CPU as well. And it wasn't a true eight core. And it does come with uh, the GTX 1050. It's not the TI version, it's only the 1052 gigabyte version, but that's what you can expect for 500 bucks. Again, the other one was 450 and we've looked at the design and uh, again, we're looking at the performance and components that you're going to get for your money. Personally, this looks a bit dated. The case looks a bit tired. It looks like an old style case. It does have uh, some mesh front at the front there. But again, with that DVD ROM drive bay there at the top, it tells me that it's an older style case. It looks a bit plasticky. Fan on the side like that is a bit old school nowadays. Could be better. Uh, for the design type of things here. Now again, if you're looking to buy a gaming computer or a computer in general, make sure there's plenty of images. This is the only image you're gonna see on this website. There's no other images, so you can't see inside, you can't see the internals, the cable management, the parts they've used, and the components and stuff like that. So really, uh, they are the key points. Design, performance, and components are really sort of important. You need to see those and listed out properly, and they're not listed out here correctly. Now, again, well, another thing that I can't understand is why they're still building PCs with the FX uh, series of AMD processors when Ryzen have released bunches of cheap CPUs which will absolutely cream this particular type of CPU. And again, it's an FX 8300. Uh, whereas the other one was an FX 6300. I don't understand why they're still building PCs with that CPU in 2020. When you can easily buy a Ryzen 1600, which will absolutely probably annihilate that CPU. And it's a proper decent CPU with modern day architecture. So moving on to the next one, we have an Ultra 8 core gaming PC or multimedia desktop computer. It only has an FX 8350 in it. 
And again, we've got a GeForce GTX 745 two gigabyte graphics card in here, and it does come with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 uh, memory in there. Now, again, they're not showing you internals of the case. It does come with an SSD, but they're not showing you any internals of it to show you the parts that you're getting or anything like that. It's just a generic picture there, and that's what you need to stay away from. You can't see what they're putting in, what power supply or anything like that. And it's a bit concerning that it's only $366, which isn't that bad. But when you put it up against the Ryzen 5 1600, you can see it's 41% faster than an FX 8350. Now, either this person doesn't understand what um, uh, processors you should be using in 2020, or he's just trying to scam people. Either way, it's not good. You can see there the massive difference in performance from the new uh, Ryzen first gens, actually not the new generation. These are the Ryzen uh, first gen, so even that will uh, literally cream that um, FX8350. So again, we've covered the design, the performance difference here, and the components used, and upgradability is the next thing you should be looking at. Uh, what's the upgradability? Well, for Ryzen, it's pretty good. You can, you've got the same AM4 socket. It's got much more better performance here. And again, you can got the AM4 socket. You can go from first to second to third gen processors. So you can always upgrade, get a better quality motherboard compared to the old uh, AM3 Plus socket. And again, DDR3 compared to DDR4, newer architecture, newer technology, and also lower temperatures and lower TDPs for the CPUs they were using. So much more better upgradability. Next up, we've got these sort of systems here. At $387, you can pick up an old workstation like this. Should you really buy these in 2020? It does come with a three year warranty, but again, it's pretty old. You can see here i5. Uh, quad uh, core processor and also a GTX 1050, eight gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte. That's two times 500 gigabyte hard drives. These are probably used hard drives. So the returns policy looks like it's 30 days there, I think. Uh, but personally, I would literally uh, steer clear of all this sort of stuff. It's old surplus office stuff or server grade stuff. And it could be Dell HP, which is all proprietary parts, which isn't easy to upgrade and change. You can see they've used old used stuff here. Everything is used. It's not new. And they're charging you $387 for the privilege of it. You can pick these up dirt cheap uh, all over the place. And you can just stick a graphics card in it yourself. The reason why they're using a GTX 1050 is because it doesn't need any additional power, which means they can leave the original power supply in these and they don't have to change them which means it's saving them money they're even using two 500 gig hard drives to save money and they're just cannibalizing them out of old systems and putting them into one system so just watch out for stuff like this personally i would steer clear of it i know there's a lot of youtubers that promote this sort of stuff it's not cool it's really old and uh, steer clear of it it's not worth the uh, the time and grief that it's going to give you 387 dollars you can build a new system which will last you a lot longer than this old girl will so moving on to another one as you can see here this is another one of those particular types of dell optiplexes core i5 uh, processor on here this is a 2400 uh, i5 in here which is pretty old hat nowadays it does come with a gtx 1050 ti version four gigabytes uh, version here with a new 256 gigabyte solid state drive and a one terabyte hard drive with 16 gigabytes of ram so this is a, a much better option it's still a very old system and again if you can pick these up dirt cheap and put a graphics card in them yourself that's what i would advise you to do i would definitely not buy these at 449 dollars 99 it's not worth it you can get them cheaper yourself uh, you can pick these up for you know like 50 bucks or something like that and then stick in uh, you know a gtx 1050 ti and you've got yourself a reasonably uh, good gaming system uh, for dirt cheap. SSDs are pretty cheap nowadays at 256 gigabyte. So really, it's not an extortionate amount of money, but it's just really sort of misleading. And it's just old office workstation stuff. I really would steer clear of it and get yourself something more modern if you can afford it. You don't have to spend vast amounts of money. I've proved that in the past at building low-end systems uh, that will still be brand new and have warranty on them and have much more upgradability. Uh, so that's another thing you need to look at really in the future. 
these sort of systems have become a bit trendy because of YouTube, people promoting this sort of stuff all over YouTube, and of course people buy them, and what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a doorstop that isn't worth as much as you think it is. So when you buy this for $449.99 and you've used it for six months and you want to buy a new system and you go to sell it, you're not going to get that much for it. You'll be lucky to get $50 for it. That's as simple as that. It's just not worth the money. And again, a 2400 uh, i5 in there is a bit old hat nowadays against the Ryzen 5 1600 you can see here uh, the scores are on the doors so 26% faster is the Ryzen 5 1600 compared to the Core i5 2400 Intel CPU which is a bit old and dated in my personal opinion nowadays you can still play games on the CPU it's no big deal but the thing is upgradeability and looking forward to the future it's a little bit slow and sluggish in my personal opinion a Ryzen 5 1600 is a really good option if you even pair that with an A320M motherboard it's still going to be a cheap build and it will still cream that i5 2400 and you'll still be able to do some editing and stuff like that with the 6 cores and 12 threads so it's definitely worth having a look at as an option and it's brand spanking new with warranty none of that old uh, type of architecture worrying about whether it's going to pack up and stuff like that so i personally go with the ryzen all day long now you can play games on these dell optiplexes with the i5 2400 and the 1050 ti 4 gigabyte i've even proved that because i made a video on it myself but what i wouldn't do is pay high money for these uh, types of setups you know you can buy these pretty cheap and then stick your own graphics card in there it's a lot cheaper again he has put medium to high settings on there at 1080p uh, and it's 60 plus frames he's put right across the board he hasn't been as accurate as he should have been but he's just putting 60 plus right across there you have to work that out for yourself check those games out and see if it plays all the games at the certain frame rates that you want it to play and you can do that by looking on uh, youtube at certain uh, types of setups uh, you just have to put i5 2400 and uh, 1050 uh, ti and see what sort of game and frame rates that you can play so next up we've got a dell optiplex 990 comes with i7 and also 16 gigabytes of DDR3. This is all used, of course, apart from the SSD, which is a 512 gigabyte SSD. If you look here at the system, it does give you back to a 90 day money back guarantee. And it does claim that this thing looks like new. If you look at the back of it, I mean, the fans are just full of dust. Look at the state of those fans. And the USB ports are completely destroyed uh, with heavy use there. So you can see this is a bin. A heavily abused uh, computer over the years and if you think that's bad when they're saying it's been completely refurbished look at the expansion slots here they've been hacked with a dremel you can see the dremel cut marks there where it's been hacked out uh, to make something fit in there which is pretty bad it's more than likely a graphics card really uh, to remove that catch or latch and they've just used a dremel on it to remove that so this is not a refurbished pc at all it's just some old piece of junk they have pulled out of an office uh, or someone's had it and uh, used it and now they're selling it you can see here as well renewed products work and look like new that does not look like new to me it's just been a heavily abused computer over the years and you can see the certified refurbishment product is tested and certified by a manufacturer or by a third party refurbisher to look and work like new limited to no signs of wear that does not look like limited or no signs of wear that looks like it's been absolutely butchered with a dremel and the fans are completely filthy so i'm not sure what they're thinking of there this one is just another one of those ones and uh, it's an fx 6300 and also 120 gigabyte ssd with a gtx 1050 ti one terabyte hard drive and 16 gigabytes of ddr3 it's pretty old it's tw it's 2012 that chip was released and they're still trying to sell it off as a gaming system it's pretty shocking that amazon let it happen so looking at this computer here we can see it does have uh, an i5 in it and also eight gigabytes of ram one terabyte hard drive windows 10 pro wi-fi ready and a gtx 650 one gigabyte that is a complete letdown right there all they've done really is given you a you know a new case and put really old equipment inside it to try and make you feel that you've got a really good pc this is an i5 2400 and uh, basically it's not that great to be fair not with 
coupled with a GTX 650 one gigabyte. You can pick these up pretty cheap and uh, you're not going to have an enjoyable experience. You know, so be very, very careful when you're uh, buying stuff like this. All it is, is a cheap $30 uh, dollar case, $50 case, if that, with some LED lighting strips in there and they put in, you can see the micro ATX motherboard in there, it's tiny, and two generic uh, RAM slots in there filled with uh, generic RAM. So it's really cheap and easy to put these together. You can put that together in like 10 minutes. And of course he's maxed it out at $459.99. So really you're just gonna end up being ripped off uh, with some old stuff here. So be very careful when you're uh, looking to buy this sort of stuff. Now this stuff, you can be purchased on Amazon. So be very careful. It's not just places like eBay, Amazon are selling these as well. And it seems to be a pretty growing trend uh, uh, selling uh, you know cheap end hardware in brand new cases you know new case old hardware trying to make you feel like it's a gaming system but really $459 is pretty bad i5 2400 here you can see the b75 lga 1155 motherboard and again video card is a gtx 650 one gigabyte it's not going to be an enjoyable experience 500, 500 watt power supply and eight gigabytes of ddr3 ram so be very very careful when you're buying these you can see inside here it's not that great to be fair and uh, you're getting a tiny little board in there inside a cheap case and of course people will buy this thinking it looks great which it does because of the rgb and you're going to end up being fooled and buying an old system here's another one here from the same uh, seller all he's doing really is the same parts but he's just changing the case so he's buying a bunch of different cases and putting the same setup inside different cases and charging the same money for it. GTX 650 one gigabytes. This will be a lottery to which GTX 650 you would get because he'll go on eBay and he's probably buying these up hand over fist and he's just buying cases and sticking them straight into a, a, a brand new case. And here you can see motherboards of that caliber are pretty cheap to buy. 26 pounds and 59 pence, which is pretty cheap. So if you're in the United States and you're picking these up, you can pick them up pretty cheap. Stick a, an, an i5 2400 in them. And he's probably got in old surplus i5s from old Dell Optiplexes and things like that and sticking them in another board and putting them in a brand new case and uh, basically selling them at extortionate prices. I think it's pretty low to be fair. And I think there should be more changes to stop this happening. There's a lot of people on YouTube that promote this sort of stuff as well and it's not cool. And it's a pretty uh, scummy sort of thing to do to to people that are you know not of the know of what's good and what's bad they're just seeing bright lights and uh, of course they end up buying it and they end up uh, getting their fingers burnt here's another one here now these sellers on ebay are not doing anything wrong they're just selling old graphics cards and old motherboards it's the actual people that are buying it and then putting them into cases and making them into computers and trying to pass them off as high-end gaming systems this is a one gigabyte gamewood card as you can see here geforce gtx uh, 650 and that's what you can expect to pay 22 pounds and 99 pence make them an offer you'll probably get that for you know 15 pounds so you can see the markup is pretty good on these pcs and it's a bit of a scam really and that's what's a, a bit of a trend at the moment and it's on ebay it's on amazon it's everywhere and you've only got to look at the feedback he's getting for his computers used and defective stop working in a day corrupt everything hard drive errors you know using old stuff what do you expect old parts new case scam and that's exactly what's happening right now people are getting scammed on this stuff all the time it's a nasty thing to do to people and these people just have no conscience and they don't care they're only in it for the quick buck and their business will be gone within you know a year and they'll start another one up okay so let's just quickly go through some of the stuff that you should be looking at so we went through the design of it whether the general look of it is it got good airflow is it an old type case uh, is it an older system is it got what you need rgb or is it led check all that sort of stuff out performance is important check the performance against modern day systems and what bang for the buck can you get modern day and what price point uh, is it at so can you do any better and new than when you would buy something old so check all that sort of stuff out components inside there are they new or are they used is it a new case and old parts inside check all that because there's plenty of that uh, old parts new case scam going on you really need to be careful on that sort of stuff upgradeability uh, path is it good enough to be upgraded in the future 
uh, to something more modern if it's old it's probably not going to be able to be upgradable uh, that easily especially if it's a Dell Optiplex they're really a nightmare to transition those into uh, the modern day uh, you are locked in with that unless you uh, cannibalize it to get it working in a modern day case some people do sell them on places so be very very careful with older technology like that again ports check all the ports on the case is it compatibility with what you need i.e usb 3.0 does it support usb 3.0 uh, mm. you know has it been uh, botched with cables usb 2 to usb 3.0 cable inside all that sort of things check all that sort of stuff out has it got enough ports on there for what you need warranty is really important check the warranty out make sure it's got a good returns policy good support check their history check all that sort of stuff before you buy from anyone and make sure that you have do have a returns policy in place and a bit of protection for yourself price again always do your research check the price make sure you are not getting ripped off and uh, you know make sure you can put that against something new if you don't know how to do that then ask someone who does know how to do that and again check the uh, benchmarks against modern day architecture and see what the difference is and what you can get for your money it's really really important because there's a lot of old crap out there that isn't worth uh, the money they're asking for it okay anyway that's going to be about it for this video my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk thanks again for watching guys if you need any help or any assistance you can always pop on our discord server there's a bunch of nice guys on there that will help you out for free and give you some free advice about computers and computer technology anyway have a great day bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the big red subscribe button on my youtube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos